Hi everyone and welcome to The Vintage Company. I'm Julie and I'm a business historian and today I'm jumping into the history of the backyard barbecue with the help of this 1959 book, Better Homes and Gardens Barbecue Book, the complete how-to for new outdoor and indoor cooking fun. So let's take a look back at the exciting world of mid-century barbecues and the tools we need to grill like it's 1959. Of course, people have been barbecuing for a very long time, originating with the indigenous peoples of North and South America. The word barbecue itself comes from barbacoa, a term used to describe raised platforms which were used by the Taino people in the Caribbean for many purposes, including cooking meat over an indirect flame for either immediate consumption or storing for later. Barbecuing would later gain a strong foothold in the American South, but it wouldn't become mainstream in the United States until about the 1950s, when the suburban home created new opportunities for backyard cookouts. The result was a barbecue boom and a $30 million industry for outdoor cooking equipment. Now, the definition for what constitutes barbecue or barbecuing has always been fuzzy and can change based on region and culture. Even today, the definition ranges from roasting or broiling food on a rack or a revolving spit over a source of heat to preparing by seasoning and cooking usually slowly and with exposure to low heat and to smoke. In the 1950s and the 1960s, the distinction between barbecuing and grilling seems to have been murky. Our 1959 barbecue book does not offer a clear definition for what barbecuing is, advertising 250 tempting over the coals recipes, and encouraging readers to poke up a fire and relax while the supper grills to a turn, while also saying that you can use your barbecue, backyard fireplace, range oven or broiler, or electric rotisserie to get that real barbecue flavor. In general, the Better Homes and Garden barbecue book uses barbecuing interchangeably with grilling, and the act of eating outdoors seems more important than the actual style of cooking itself. For the purposes of this video, we'll be looking at barbecues and barbecuing through the lens of better homes and gardens, which means ignoring any differences between grilling and barbecuing. Now, aside from the barbecue or grill, what tools did our mid-century chef need for a barbecue? First, let's start with tools for handling food over heat. Tongs, forks, spoons, turners, and carving knives were needed for easy barbecuing. This particular Washington Forge stainless steel barbecue tool set was called the perfect companion for the outdoor chef. The set includes a slicing knife, a weenie fork, a serving spoon, and a hamburger turner. The long safety handles were advertised as fire resistant and no slip. Very important features for cooking over an open flame. Now let's add something a little more specialized, a kebab barbecue wheel. Kebabs were all the rage in the 1950s. Restaurant critic Craig Claiborne called the kebab craze second to only the national rage for pizza. Kebabs seemed to have unlimited possibilities for a 1950s barbecue. Anything and everything could be put on a skewer. Kebabs could be easily turned into sandwiches by sliding meat onto buttered buns, and one recipe required no grilling at all. One could simply alternate salami, pickled onions, green peppers, and tomatoes on skewers and serve with bean-filled muffins. Made by Mr. Chef Tender, this kebab barbecue wheel could be attached to a spit and cooked over a grill or rotisserie, and it had the added bonus of cooking hot dogs in addition to kebabs. And we can't forget another fad of 1950s cooking, using aluminum foil. The barbecue book calls foil cooking a real adventure in eating, and featured 19 foiled cooked recipes. Using aluminum foil was described as being easy on the cook. Meals in foil could be prepped hours ahead of time, cooked over the coals or in an oven, and served as is to guests for them to open. And perhaps most importantly, they required little to no cleanup. With our Reynolds wrap on hand, we can make anything from garlic bread to chicken supreme to the chuck wagon special. Sirloin tips, potatoes, and vegetables, which Better Homes and Gardens suggested eaters pitch into that He-Man fare. By the way, the book uses the phrase He-Man on at least five different occasions, and it was a reference to the perceived masculinity of grilling meat that, in the 1950s, alluded to either cavemen or cowboys. Another important part of eating outdoors was what Better Homes and Gardens called the sit and sip department, beverages. This Hamilton Scotch thermos jug in an attractive plaid design could keep cool drinks cool and hot drinks hot for hours. 
Now my first impression was that this particular jug was for picnics, and the barbecue book makes no explicit mention of a thermos. But you can see a very similar jug on the cover of the book, and having a cooler or a bucket of ice around was recommended for drinks and perishables. One of the last major requirements of the mid-century barbecue was coffee. Yes, coffee. Better Homes and Gardens recommended you have a man-sized coffee pot, and make sure you have a jumbo pot if you're serving it hot, or a big pitcher for iced coffee. Fill cups again and again. Folks will keep sipping until you stop pouring. Keep warm on edge of grill, on warming shelf above barbecue, or with food warmer. If you have an outdoor electrical outlet, plug in your automatic coffee maker. In a jiffy, coffee's hot and fragrant, just the strength you like. Now, hamburgers and coffee is not my usual go-to, but it was clearly the drink of choice based on our barbecue book. Of the book's 24 suggested menus, 18 included coffee, most of them hot. So best to have your coffee maker on hand. This six cup corningware percolator should do the trick. Made from heat defying pyroceram, the percolator could even withstand the heat of a barbecue without damage, and would, as Better Homes and Gardens would say, keep them lolling and lingering with perfect coffee kept steaming hot in an immense pot. Today, backyard grilling remains an immensely popular summer pastime, with 4th of July and Memorial Day being the most popular grilling days of the year, followed by Labor Day, Father's Day, and Mother's Day. According to the Harf Patio and Barbecue Association, over two-thirds of all American adults owned a grill or smoker in 2020. What emerged as a mid-century fad has since become a mainstay of American culture. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look back at mid-century backyard barbecues. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to this channel for more vintage content. Thank you again, and I hope to see you next time.